Hey everybody, welcome to the channel and welcome to Celebrate Sausage. I hope you're having a great day. My name is Eric and I'm glad you could join us because today we are going to be talking about sausage casings. Casings play a very important part in the production of sausages and there are a lot of different types of casings to choose from. I mean, for starters, you've got an entire selection of natural casings and an entire selection of synthetic casings. In today's video, we're only gonna be talking about natural casings, and I'm gonna just show you the ones that I use. At the end of this video, we'll go over some troubleshooting tips in the event that something has gone wrong with your casings. We'll talk about long-term storage, and I'll share with you my thoughts on the use of vinegar and or lemon juice in the water while you're rehydrating your casing. So be sure to stick around to the very end for that. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at some of the different casings I use, starting with the sheep casing. I love the sheep casing. These are packed in salt and sold in different sizes. I bought these from the sausage maker and they carry five sizes of sheep casing, ranging from 18 millimeter all the way up to 28 millimeter. When shopping for casings, and you can apply this to all casings, you wanna to try to make sure that your casings are 100% natural, meaning that no dyes or bleaches were used in the process. You also wanna look for grade A casings. That's the highest quality casing you can get. These sheep casings are from New Zealand. They're grade A quality. And what that means is that they're rated for emulsified sausages. Grade B quality means that the casings have some holes and they're really more rated towards your coarse sausage. Sheep casings are a lot more delicate than your hog or beef casings. They produce a very, very tender bite because they're so thin walled. And they're great for your frankfurters, for your merguez, for your snack sticks, basically any type of sausage that you wanna make that's gonna be a very small diameter sausage. All right, so there's our sheep casing. It's coated in salt, and we're just going to set that to the side as we look at the next round of natural casings, which is going to be the hog casings. So in our operation, we use hog casings more than any, and they also come in a variety of sizes. I've got four right here in front of me, so everything from 29 millimeter all the way up to 42 millimeter. And uh, notice right there, it says non-pre-tubed and pre-tubed. So hog casings come uh, a couple different ways. And I'll show you what the pre-tubed version looks like here in just a second. But these hog casings from the sausage maker are also A grade quality. So that's the best quality you can get. They are 100% natural casings and the whiskers have been removed. So I don't know if you've ever seen whiskers on a sausage, but it's these little capillaries that looks like hairs on the outside of the casings. Well, on these, they've been removed. And all of these hog casings from the sausage maker come from North American hogs. So one thing to know about hog casings is that they're not as delicate as sheep casings. So when you're using hog casings, you don't have to be as gentle with them as you would, let's say, a sheep casing. There are a lot of different sausages that use hog casings, and it really just comes down to how big you want your sausage to be. I mean, you've got sausages like bratwurst, andouille, and Polish sausage that all use hog casings, and they're all slightly different sizes. So we're gonna set that to the side, clean it up in a minute, and let me show you the pre-tubed casing. In the pre-tube world, I have two different sizes. Uh, one's a 2932, and the other one is a 3235. I use those sizes probably more than any, and these are both pre-tubed. And so we're just gonna open up one of these packs, take one of them out, and then I'll show you how to prepare a pre-tubed hog casing, but this is exactly what you would think uh, it is. It's a hog casing that's already been threaded so that it makes it incredibly easy to put on your horn. Now, the cost of the pre-tubed is a little bit more expensive than your not pre-tubed, but it's incredibly convenient, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. One end is open, one end is closed, and I'm gonna show you how to not only prepare it, but how to actually put it on your horn. The third group is the beef natural casings, and this includes the beef rounds, the beef middles, and then we'll talk about the beef bungs here in a second. All of these are also from the sausage maker. They're the highest quality, 100% natural, and these casings are from Brazil. And the beef rounds, this is what I'm holding right here, is uh, typically a casing that's going to be used to make your ring bologna, your uh, falu corv, things like that, because it's going to have a, a naturally curved appearance. That's why it's called a round. Whereas beef middles would be used in a sausage where you want a thicker diameter and a straight appearance. You know, sausages such as sajuk, summer sausage, uh, salamis, tivast, liverwurst cook sausages, the things like that. So notice they're packed in salt. And the way you prepare the beef middles, the beef rounds, the hog casings, you know, whether it's on the tube or not, or the sheep casings is all pretty much the same way. So the last type of casing I'm going to show you here is a beef 
bung. The beef bung is the appendix on the cow, and we've got three sizes here, also from the sausage maker. These are the highest quality beef bungs you can get. We've got an 89 millimeter all the way up to 127 millimeter. And the beef bung looks a lot like a sock. So it's opened at one end, it's closed on the opposite end. And when you buy a beef bung from the sausage maker, you're gonna get one beef bung per order. And that's what this is right here. So this is the uh, smallest one of the three that we have. We're just gonna open it up and take a look inside. Beef bung is generally used for your large diameter sausages. Things like Lebanon bologna, you know, you can also take your whole muscles and stuff it inside of that beef bung, which makes for a great casing if you're gonna be doing whole muscle dry curing. But all we're gonna do is open it up, and this really expands quite a bit. So it makes for a great casing when you're doing large format sausages. So let me show you how I prepare my natural casings and get them ready for the stuffer. Okay, let's start with the natural hog casing. And this method of preparation can be applied to any natural casing that's been stored in salt. So all we're gonna do is rinse this casing off a few times in cool water. So I'm gonna dump that water out, put some fresh water in, and we're getting all that excess salt off the exterior of the casing. Uh, once we rinse it real well, we're gonna dump that water out. We're gonna open up that casing and we're gonna flush it out. So we wanna try to get out any you know residual salt that's on the inside of that casing. So I'm gonna find the end, open it up with my fingers, and then add some running water to the inside of that casing. It's gonna fill it up like a small balloon. So you don't have to fill the entire casing up with water. You could just put a little bit in it. And this is what I'm doing right here. And then once we've got enough water in there, I'm gonna pull that casing out of the bowl and now it's properly flushed. So this is what our casing now looks like. It's completely flushed. And notice that I'm still hanging onto the end of that casing. We're just gonna take that little piece and drape it over the lip of the bowl. And the only reason we're doing that is to not have to go searching for it later. So we're just gonna toss that over the lip and set that to the side. I now wanna get a cup of cool water ready because we do wanna soak these casings. Now you could technically do it in that bowl, but I'm just gonna use the cup because it takes less space. So I've got a cup of cool water. And what I'm about to show you is the way that I prefer to do it. You can omit the baking soda if you want and technically just use water, but I'm gonna put about a teaspoon and a half of baking soda in that quart of water and what that's gonna do is that's gonna alkalinize that solution. I've noticed that by doing this, it actually lubricates the casing a lot better. It allows it to slide onto the horn a lot easier. And I've noticed it makes stuffing your meat a lot easier. So we're just gonna place that casing into that solution. I'm gonna drape the end of it off the edge and I'm gonna place this into the refrigerator overnight. So basically 12 hours. Now let's look at the pre-tubed hog casing. And for this casing, we don't need to flush it out. We're just gonna rinse off the exterior salt from that casing. So just a quick rinse, dump the water, rinse it again. And then once we're finished, we're gonna prepare our alkaline solution. So remember, one and a half teaspoons for every quart of water, and the water is cool. We're gonna give it a stir, and then I'm gonna place my pre-tube casing in that water so that it can soak in the refrigerator overnight. And remember, like I said earlier, if you just wanna do it in water, that's totally fine too. You can omit the baking soda if you choose. So that's gonna go in the fridge. And let's look at the last one that we're gonna to prepare today. This one is the beef bung and we're gonna prepare it the exact same way. And you'll notice that when it comes to natural casings, the method of preparation is the same. You're gonna rinse off the exterior salt. If it's not pre-tubed, you're going to flush it out, and then you're gonna let it soak, preferably overnight. Allowing your natural edible casings to soak for the appropriate amount of time plays a huge role in how tender they are once they're cooked. So if you can, don't rush that step. But if you're in a pinch and you need some casings pretty quick, here in a second, I'll share with you a quick soak method where you can have casings ready in just an hour. All right, so the beef bung has been rinsed. Uh, we filled it with water and so we're about to flush it out. And as you can see here, it expands quite a bit. So depending on what you're making, this may be a great casing for you. Our next step is to place this into our water solution to begin the soaking process. And we do wanna soak this overnight. It's gonna give it the most elasticity and it's just gonna perform a whole lot better when we go to use it. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I have about a quart of water in there, teaspoon and a half of baking soda, and I'm just gonna mix that around to dissolve it. And that's it, that's gonna sit in there in the refrigerator overnight. Okay, let's recap. When it comes to preparing your natural casing, and it doesn't matter if it's sheep, hog, or beef, you're gonna start by rinsing the casings, flushing the casings, and then you're gonna place your casings in cool water and allow them to soak in the refrigerator overnight. 
You can optionally add one and a half teaspoons of baking soda for every quart of water, which is what I do, but that is optional. If you're in a pinch and you need natural casings relatively quick, you could always use the fast method, and that starts off by rinsing your casings, then flushing your casings, and then finally placing your casings in warm water that's at 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius for 30 to 60 minutes. Optionally, you can add a little baking soda, which will help lubricate the casings. And although this method does work, it doesn't produce the most optimal results. So for me, this isn't really a preferred way of preparing your natural casings, but it does work when you're in a pinch. Okay, it's now the next day, and I'm gonna show you how to load up the horn with your casings. Uh, this is the pre-tube casing. It's been soaking overnight. And if you look at the casing itself, you'll notice that one end is open and one end is closed. Well, the end that's open has a little plastic tab inside. Let me show you what that looks like. Let me kind of peel it back. The sausage horn is gonna slide in between that tab and that red plastic sleeve, just like this. There you go, and that's it. So once we've got it on, we're gonna pull the tab out. We're gonna pull the plastic sleeve out of the other end, and we are completely loaded. Each one of those pre-tube casings from the sausage maker actually has three unique casings on it. So as you can see right there. All right, so let's look at the hog casings that were not pre-tubed, and let me show you how we're gonna load that up. We're gonna start by lubricating our horn with a little bit of water. Notice I'm not using any oil. And then I'm gonna dip the end of that casing into the water, which is gonna help me open it back up because we're gonna fill that casing with a little bit of water. And doing this is gonna keep the inside of that casing lubricated, which is gonna allow it to slide on effortlessly. Now that our casing is on the horn, let me show you what it should look like. You should be able to easily slide that casing forward and back with little to no resistance. If there's a lot of resistance, it means it's not lubricated enough or possibly the horn size is too big. So we're gonna tie that off and create a nice little knot. Let's do that a little slower. So with the back of my fingers, I'm gonna twist the end of that casing. I'm gonna grab the end of it and then I'm gonna pull it on the horn, which is gonna create that little knot. And there we go. I like to prick the end of it with a sausage pricker just so that any last minute air can escape and finally let me show you what we're going to do with any casing that you have left over after you're finished making sausage so the first thing you're going to want to do is rinse out your casing that cleans the casing out from any debris that might be left over from the process of making sausage once you find the end of it pinch it and then just go ahead and work your way down the entire line of the casing that's going to get any excess water or moisture out of the casing and at this point all we have to do is salt it and then place it in the refrigerator and we're good to go. So I have these little bags that I like to uh, store my excess casings in. So I'm gonna put salt, I'm gonna put my casing in there, give it a little shake, tie it off and then store it in the refrigerator. It's just as easy as that. It's now ready for me to use the next time I make sausages. All right, so let's cover a couple of issues that might come up when it comes to casings. And let me just first start off by saying that if your casings are bought from a reputable company, they're salted correctly and they're stored correctly, you should have no problems with your casings. I mean, the shelf life is incredible, a year plus. But every once in a while, something funny happens. So let's just start with the most commonly asked question. You just got your casings, you open them up, and they have a relatively strong smell. Well, this is completely normal, and these odors generally come from gases that are formed in the bag with the casings while the casings are being transported in warm weather. So once you receive your casings, if they do have a strong smell, just open the bag, air them out for an hour or two, and then close the bag back up and refrigerate it, and that should take care of your odor problem. But what if it doesn't go away and the next time you use your casings, it's a little stronger than you would like? Well, all you've got to do is follow the instructions in this video on how to prepare your casings and simply by adding a little bit of baking soda to your water will draw out any of those harsh smells. Now, if your casings smell rotten, like a rotten carcass, then that may be a problem with your casings and you might want to call the manufacturer because casings, although do have a relatively strong smell sometimes, shouldn't smell spoiled or rotten. So, something to consider. 
Another question that we get a lot is how do we keep our casing from getting so tough after it's cooked? You know, when they bite it, it seems a little tough and chewy. And that comes down to three things. First and foremost, make sure that you get A quality casing, A grade casing. Those are gonna deliver across the board better products. Another thing you could do to influence the tenderness of your casing is just make sure you rehydrate it for the appropriate amount of time. You don't wanna rush that step. The longer you rehydrate it, you know, ideally overnight, the better results you're gonna get. And the third thing you could do to get a nice tender bite out of your sausage is increase the humidity in the area that you're gonna be cooking by adding a pot of water or a tray of water. And this is gonna keep the sausage casing from drying out too much during the cooking process, which will give you a nice, tender, very snappy bite. Another question that we get quite often is about storage. And the way I do it is I'll cut my bag open, pull the casings that I need out, and then I'll just leave the bag open until I'm finished making sausages. Once I'm done, I'll add a teaspoon or two of additional salt to the casings. I'll vacuum seal it and I'll place it in the coldest part of my refrigerator. And the last question that we get a lot is one that deals with the use of vinegar or lemon juice inside the water when you prepare your casings. And this is a very polarizing topic. So all I wanna do is share with you my personal experience. And if you find that that experience can help you make better sausages, by all means, apply it. So let me start off by saying that people will generally add an acid, most commonly vinegar, sometimes uh, lemon juice to the water that they're soaking their casing in to tenderize the casings. And it is a fantastic tenderizer. There's no question about it. But from my personal experience, I found that when an acid is added to the water, it tends to degrade the wall of the casing, making it extremely fragile. I mean, think about what happens to an egg when you place it in a cup of vinegar. That outer shell will completely dissolve. And what ends up happening is you have a casing that no longer has the same strength and you're a lot more likely to get tears, uh, blowouts, things like that. I can say that I rarely add vinegar. I mean, almost never. And if I do, it's an absolute last resort. And it's generally because I'm using very poor quality casings where the, uh, the wall of the casing is extraordinarily thick. If I'm using A quality casings, like you saw in this video, and I soak them for the appropriate amount of time, I've never had a problem. So for me, it's better to soak your casings in an alkaline solution rather than use an acid like vinegar or lemon juice, which tends to degrade your casings. Uh, and you may never have a problem if you use acid, but you're a lot more likely to have a problem uh, if you do use an acid. So there you go, there's the information. And thank you for watching this video on casings. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you liked this video or got anything out of it, a great big thumbs up would be helpful. If this is the first video that you've seen from our channel, take a moment, click that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of all of our uploads. Tomorrow is the season finale of season two, Celebrate Sausage, and I don't want you to miss it. Thanks a lot for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.